how you created some of your other characters from scratch. But with Del Boy, you actually based him on somebody, didn't you? And that man must have been a bit of a ledge. <laughs> he was. Yeah, he was... Um... I mean, it's, it's a well-known fact that uh, when I was working as an electrician, um, my uh, partner and I, we were desperate for, for work, and uh, we went around uh, all through London, West End, the East End, to knock at all the builders' doors and see if they could give us some work. And we knocked at one door down in the East End, and it was called William Hockley and Son Builders. Right. And um, we were shown into this office and they said, yeah, come and meet Derek Hockley. And this guy came out uh, to meet us. And i never, ever forget him because he was dressed absolutely immaculately. I mean, <laughs> everything about him was perfect, except you could cut his accent with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never saw an in East Ender or a, a Londoner that would talk like that, it was really right out like that, and he talked like that. But they were always like costas, and they was always in rough clothes and flat hats and all that. And here was Derek Hockley looking like a lord, and he... <laughs> there he is. This is the man himself. That's him, yeah. Derek, and he talked like a costermonger. <laughs> and it so fascinated me that many, many years later, when I was constructing the character of Derek Trotter, and I think it's a well-known fact, that John Sullivan, I asked him how he saw the character, and he said that he saw him with a flat cap and a, a, a pot belly, a beer belly, and rough trousers and, you know, and scruffy. And I said, no, I don't see him like that. And John said, well, how do you mean? How do you see him? And I said, I met this character years ago and he's stuck in my mind. And why can't he be an immaculate dresser but, you know, still be a Cockney, still be a Londoner? Because he had big ideas, didn't he? So that's yeah. what did him, yeah. So that is how I sort of went. And John Sullivan said to me, OK, he said, if, you, if, if, that, if, you, if that makes you happy and you feel comfortable like that, let's go with that. So I then constructed the character around Derek Trotter, who uh, was always a sharp, you know, always wanting Jack the Lad. And, of course, of course the other thing was that body language is, mm. is very important in the characters that I play. And the thing that fascinated me, again, is when you construct a character, you draw on real life. I draw, mm. drew, drew on real life. And one of the things that fascinated me about, and you can still see them today, is the Jack the Lads. They have this body, <laughs> they have, yes, they have they the do. language, yeah. right, yeah. you know. And uh, when they walk, they got, they got a swing from got the shoulders. Swagger. They've got the they? swagger, swagger, haven't they? The swagger, yeah, that's it. You can do it. Bit Look at that. he's got it. Right. It's just yeah, it's yeah, really yeah, bad. Hey. Crick in the neck. Um, but no, I, that, that was certainly not worth a clap. I don't know. <laughs> what it was. No, it um, certainly wasn't worth a clap. But David, that, that's that. just the character because here we are, surrounded by all this only fools and horses memorabilia, mm. and it, you writing the book about some of the touches that you added to make it even more humorous. Things like adding plastic covering to the sofa. Which, by oh. the way, I love, and I'm going to do it at home. <laughs> she... Yeah. It's not for her baby she's talking about. She has a wonderful husband called Charlie. But, yes, you added all of this. You added... Just got it. Uh, you added all of these, these trinkets. Yeah. Well, what, how that came about, again, was the fact that we um, realised that there was a lot of stuff that kept moving through the flat. In other words, Del Boy was a, a mover and a shaker and, a, right, yeah. you know, stuff that fell off the back of a lorry or whatever, and he would do a deal and then shift it and more stuff would come in. And so I had this idea that, what well, if we were doing that, why didn't we do it with the furniture? So what we had was new furniture come in and you kept the pla we kept the plastic on it <laughs> so that when we moved it, we didn't stain it, you see. So we, we did that for a while, then we moved the furniture. The furniture changed. We were in a sort of constant change and you, you're always looking for things that uh, you can give to an audience mm. that they can enjoy without actually telling them that if you put the plastic, as we did, on the furniture, 
What we did was, and I would say, is don't say anything. We don't have to say anything, mm. just do it. Let the audience do some work. And to me, it's always been very important that when you're doing a comedy show, particularly a comedy show, you've got to leave spaces for the audience to do some work. In other words, they've got to sit there and they go, did you see that? Did you see that? And you go, what, what? Look. They've moved the furniture. He's got plastic <laughs> on the furniture. <laughs> and they enjoy it. Audiences enjoy that. And so you, I knew that about it, what audiences liked. And so I've always peppered my uh, work with any, with any human moments that I, I think that people would enjoy. They have to look for it and get the reward. Yeah. yeah.